are set for racing. Five laps here at Thunder Valley, the Food City 500. The guy behind me, Rusty Wallace. It's his 10th anniversary. This race, 10 years ago, he won his first Winston Cup race. He has since won five times at Bristol, four in the spring event. And folks, Rusty just said, hey, Doc, we got something for him today. Watch this Miller Ford. We may start 11th, but we're not going to be here for very long. Up. Jerry, let's take a look at the starting lineup for this Food City 500. The pole sitter is Mark Martin, his third straight pole here at Bristol, 29th of his career outside Terry Labonte, the 96th leader in laps led. In row number two, it's Daryl Waltrip, first 96 start in the top 10, alongside Sterling Marlin, four races in the top 10 here at Bristol. In the third row, in his 100th NASCAR Winston Cup start, Bobby Labonte, and Mike Skinner in his 12th NASCAR Winston Cup event. The fourth row of the points leader, Dale Jarrett, and outside the defending 1995 Winston Cup champion and the defending champion of this race, Jeff Gordon. Back in row five comes Ricky Rudd. All finishes this year in the top 10, and Kenny Wallace has been a, had a great run in 1996. Rusty Wallace back in row six. Jerry Punch just told you all about him, and Ward Burton. In the Pontiac, NBA Pontiac will start outside. Row seven, Ricky Craven. Great run at Martin Rockin' Darlington last week and Hut Strickland. And in row eight, we find Jimmy Spencer, an exciting driver to watch, especially on this racetrack, and Ernie Irvin in the Haviland Ford. Row number nine, we find Derek Cope in the Bobby Allison car, along with Morgan Shepard, who had his best run of the year last week at Darlington. And in row number 10, we find Dale Earnhardt. Watch for him to come up through the pack. And Joe Nemechek, who spun out on his second lap of qualifying. And there are 19 positions on the front stretch for pits, so Dale Earnhardt has the last one. All of these drivers will be pitting on the back stretch, back stretch including the Bodine brothers in 21st and 22nd starting positions. The 12th row, Robert Presley and Bobby Hamilton. Row number 13 has Michael Waltrip and Lake Speed. The 14th row, it's Elton Sawyer in car number 27 and Ken Schrader in 25. Back in row 15 is Dick Trickle and Ted Musgrave. Row 16, Wally Dallin back and Rick Mass, the last car got in field qualifying. The provisionals for this race. And the provisionals are in row 17, Jeff Burton and Kyle Petty. In row 18, we find Jeremy Mayfield and Steve Grissom. And Bill Elliott taking the champion's provisional. Obviously, Elliott had the chance to take a points provisional but chose to take the champions provisional and that allowed one more car to start this food city 500 and look at this the separation in terms of time between the fastest and the 32nd uh, fastest point three one one seconds and as you saw at the very beginning of the show that's just about the amount of time it takes you to blink your eyes that's less than a hundredth of a second per car yep unbelievable Bernard's Board well, he's rather thing. relaxed, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> There's our pole sitter, uh, Mark Martin. Let's take a look at our race analysis. 500 laps, the event record held by Cale Yarborough way back in 1977 at 100.989 miles an hour. Our pole speed, 123 and a half by Mark Martin. They'll be pitting for tires between laps 115 and 120, and they'll be going for a purse in excess of $1.3 million. The uh, Unical bonus money is way up there today. Look at it, $121,600. That's only for Mark Martin if he goes on to win. And the NASCAR Winston Cup leader bonus has jumped up to $40,000 if the winner is also the points leader at the end of the event. The cars begin to roll away, and we're about 35 minutes past our scheduled time, but the green flag is moments away.
Hey, Mike, how you looking? Yahoo! <laughs> Yahoo! <laughs> That's... Uh-oh. don't have in the ISO what I would like to have. If you can know. What? What? coverage of the Food City 500 from Bristol International Raceway being brought to you by Firestone and your neighborhood Firestone Tire and Service Centers. By Texaco Haviland Formula 3 Motor Oil controls volatility and fights vaporization. Add more life to your car, take it to the star. By Pontiac, proud sponsor of the 1996 U.S. Olympic team, we are driving excitement. And by the NASCAR story to order call 871 NASCAR. How are we looking out there, guys? About ready to go green, you think? Oh, yeah. That racetrack is in good shape. Yes, it is. 37 cars include 21 Fords, 12 Chevys, and four Pontiacs. We have a Ford and a Chevy on the front row. Now let's take a look at our in-car cameras that we'll have for you today. We have several of them. This is Kyle Petty's car. The camera is right on the right front fender. Kyle Petty's car. So he'll show us how close he gets to that wall and exactly. other cars. Here's Kenny Schrader. We have a roof cam and a panning rear bumper cam on Kenny Schrader's car. And there's some raindrops hitting the oh, camera lens. I hope you wouldn't notice. <laughs> Michael Waltrip, a lot of cars up there for Michael to pass. He has a, a roof cam and a panning rear bumper also. Rusty Wallace has an in-car and a roof cam. Not quite as many cars ahead of him. And with absolutely nobody ahead of him is our pole center, Mark Martin. An inside camera, a roof cam, and a panning rear bumper. And you can see that the light is out atop the Pace car will be going green next time. Mark Martin making his 300 stars of the day, Hutt Strickland his 200th, and Bobby Labonte his 100th. Hard to believe that Mark Martin has not led a lap in NASCAR Winston Cup competition this year, but I think that's yeah, going to change here very shortly. <laughs> Watch this. <laughs> well, we wonder whether or not there was enough rain that fell to wash off the rubber that was put down by the Bush race yesterday and make this a totally green racetrack. I guess we'll be finding that out within a few laps after the green comes out, and we are just about ready for that moment. I don't think it rained that much, Bob. I don't either. I agree with The crowd rises to its feet, and the green is out. The Food City 500 underway from Bristol. Position. But Ernie. now they begin to get in single file formation. Joe Nemechek is hung out. Yeah, Ernie Urban was. Ernie finally got back down again after uh, about a lap and a half. But Joe Nemechek still out there. The car is still going back down on the inside. It's Bobby Hamilton to the inside and Michael Waltrip. Back of Hamilton as they come off the corner and on the straightaway again. And still Nemechek unable to get back in line. Tell you what, Nemechek is running pretty doggone fast on the outside. I'm impressed. Yeah, really? really? Yeah, he's running good out there. In fact, he, he had an opportunity there to get back down, it looked like, and Morgan Shepard came on hungry, but I believe that he could have gotten down there, but he chose to stay out there. Maybe not there. Man, oh, man. This in-car camera is fun, and it... Oh, I thought Kyle was going to... 
The camera, as we can see, does revolve. Ooh, thank goodness for that. By the way, Rick Mast is a little under the weather, suffering from the flu, and he has David Green standing by to reef or leaf drive if necessary. And there is Rick Mast in the number one car. Here's Schrader. That's Elton Sawyer, the 27 car, the unsponsored vehicle in the in front of Schrader. Jeff Gordon just passed Ricky Rudd for the seventh position. Here's Rudd, Kenny Wallace, and Rusty Wallace. There you can see their eighth, ninth, and tenth on your scoring pylon in the upper left of your screen. The bar simply separates the first five from the second five. It doesn't mean that the second five is a lap down or anything. That's just a way of making it easier for you to look up and see who's running where. And we add the uh, manufacturers and the names to the pylon. And we got six Chevys and two Fords in the top ten, but a Ford driven by Martin sets the pace at the moment. Now here's Jeff Gordon coming up on Mike Skinner. That's the Richard Childress second car. And that sponsor you see is Real Tree Camouflage Clothing. Mm, he's right there, isn't he? They continue to uh, look better weather-wise, although you do, do see some raindrops on the camera lens there, but it's getting much brighter, and we may even see the sun here before too long. Here's Morgan Shepard moving to the inside of Derry Cope as Ernie Irvin tried to come along but couldn't. Meanwhile, Jeff Gordon does take over the sixth position from Skinner. There we see how far Jeff Gordon has to go to catch the 18 car of Bobby Labonte. There's a battle for third spot. Daryl Walker with 17, Western Auto Car, and Sterling Marlin, Kodak Film Chevrolet. If you haven't heard, Jeff Hammond is back with Daryl Waltrip. Pete Peterson remains as a crew chief. Jeff just in there to kind of bring the team together and get Daryl Waltrip back up in the front again. And I don't know whether it was coincidence or not, but Daryl Waltrip had his best starting position of 96. He started this race from third position. Now we come around about almost a half lap, maybe a quarter. There is the leader, Mark Martin, who uh, has separated himself a little bit from Terry Lamani, running second. In another 10 laps, he's going to catch the tail end of this pack, of this field. And that's when business is going to really pick up. All these fellas trying their best to stay. There we see the group of cars, the first group that Mark Martin will encounter. There's Dale Jarrett in the 88 car, the points leader, Bill Elliott. Jimmy Mayfield. And we remind you that Dale Jarrett had to drop to the back of the field. He's in a backup car because he crashed on the second lap of his qualifying effort after turning in a very quick lap and, in fact, the seventh best. Here comes Dale Earnhardt charging up on Ricky Craven. And Earnhardt has already moved up. Uh, let's see. We're not even showing him on our screen here right now. So he's, he's a bit, he has moved up to about 15th position. There we go. He's running in the 14th spot at the moment. Started 19th, and he picks off another as he goes to the bottom side and passes Ricky Craven. He's up to 13th right now. And who's ahead of Dale Earnhardt? Well, it's Hut Strickland, Ward Burton, and Ricky Rudd. See the eight car Hutch trip and Circuit City sponsorship. Uh, Frank Birchfield was with the Western Auto. People have moved over to run the Circuit City Motorsports program, and he is excited with that job. How close does it get here, Benny? Yeah, well, let's see. Man, we drove that camera right up on the left rear tire. <laughs> and there's a mark on the left. <laughs> yes. Our camera has a tire mark on it. <laughs> Steve Grissom just got lapped. So he has to go on a lap down. A tire mark on the camera. <laughs> Ricky.
Chris had a great run uh -oh. yesterday in the push race, but has already lost a lap. It's barely sprinkling right now, not enough to get the track damp and to uh, put a, out a caution. And now we see Rusty Wallace trying to take the uh, position away from Mike Skinner. Yeah, he's really been working on him. As uh, looked like Robert Preston went around the Michael Walker car. But Rusty has really been working on Mike Skinner, but he just can't get around him. Riding with Michael Walter, he started 25th, has moved up two positions. And he drives right up on the back bumper of Robert Presley. Mark Martin's been able to lap on Rick Mast. Who, by the way, Rick and Sharon are expecting twins. We congratulate them. Yes, yeah, they're the best. Not triplets. Well, no. he said? Oh, it's two. It's yeah. just oh, twins. Okay, back to dark. Yep. They first said they thought they were going to be Yeah. Okay. Here's Labonte also passing some traffic. There's Jeff Gordon, Bobby Labonte. And there is Rusty, who's still trying to get around Skinner. Skinner leaves the door open there in the second corner, but Rusty didn't have the momentum to get around him. And Jeff Gordon is on the move. And it's Skinner is now, oh, I thought he was going to let Rusty go back and oh, almost had some contact between those two cars. That's Mike Skinner in the 31 and Rusty Wallace with two. Oh, trouble up here in turn four. We have Lake Speed, Elton Sawyer. Oh, in trouble. And Sterling Marlin was also involved in the crash. Sterling Marlin was on the move. He had just passed Waltrip, but... The first caution is out on the 31 lap, and Lake Speed's car is most damaged from this accident. The car slid clear across the racetrack, and fortunately, nobody hit him, but the damage had already been done when he hit the fourth turn outside wall. Tell you what, Kenny Schrader, yeah, he was involved, man. He's got some pretty good damage on his automobile as well. well you can figure that there's an early accident. Ken Schrader is going to be involved in it. That seems the way things are going for him. Let's take a look. Lake Speed jumps on the brake to avoid hitting the 87 car of Joe Nemechek. And behind him, while he's trying to get her control, the 25 and set 27 of Elton Sawyer, they make contact. That was not part of the Lake Speed wreck, but he ended up getting in the wreck because of those two cars behind him. There is Elton. He's out of the car. Okay, but a lot of damage to the Ford. So a big break for a number of cars that were about to go a lap down. A few already had. I remember when I used to could do that jump on the wall. <laughs> and here's Bill. And Elton Sawyer has just climbed out of his car and run across the track. He's taking off his heat shield off his heel. What happened? Well, I'm not real sure. Uh, the nine car got a little loose down in three, and uh, you know I had to check up a little bit. Kenny didn't have anywhere to go. You know, it's, it's pretty tight down there at Russell. It's unfortunate, you know, I hate it, David. Uh, I know he's back in Arkansas sponsorship hunting, but uh, these guys really worked hard this week. Our car's tore up, but we'll be back at Wilkesboro. And they have been working hard, and we'll see them next time out, two weeks of Wilkesboro. Elton Sawyer out of competition here after a crash. It's Martin, Terry Labonte, Jeff Gordon, Daryl Waldrop, and Bobby Labonte, the top five after 32 laps. Did I jump on you there, Neil? Uh, uh, we, we both had the same idea. Yeah. That looked like two different directions on the same yeah. time, didn't yeah. it? Of course, I mean, I, I guess that he said it when he had to back up a little bit yeah. because of yeah. that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at the football right now. I'm going to go That's what I call mush. That's <laughs> <laughs> mushed. It's mushed. <laughs> I guess I'll Bill take Elliott off my coat and, and stay a while. Made pit stops on the back stretch. They were near the end of the pack, and so I can't blame them for that. DJ started 37th. He's up to 26th. Maybe a few strides. Yep. Have anything in the in-car camera? Okay. Man, that was some shot there, Grissom. Though. 
Atta baby. <laughs> we'll be standing up here. Don't get too excited and stand up. <laughs> Under caution because of a crash up in turns three and four. And as you can see, there is a little bit of precipitation also falling as the pit crews come out and try to keep pit area as dry as possible. This is Kenny Schrader's bumper cam. I'll tell you, I don't have. Petty and you hear the spotter tell him come on come on come on and here is how it looked from the grandstand. Lex Speed just went up there and almost hit Joe Nemechek hit the brakes to keep from hitting him then went a little high on the racetrack Kenny Schrader saw an opening apparently down on the inside he jumped up in there he and Elton Sawyer got together and you see the results let's go to the pits and John Kern. Schrader is pulled up behind the wall his crew working on the right front suspension the lower control arm on the right front is bent they are going to have to replace that so Schrader is going to be behind the wall for quite a while. Another tough break for Kenny Schrader who finds himself uh, behind the wall and uh, looking for repairs in the early going. The green comes out. Steve Grissom's right front tire is flat. Can you imagine just when the car the green flag discovers that his right front tire is completely flat. He's got to go to the Meanwhile, back to racing. Yeah, he could have come into the pits and during that caution to change that had he known he was flat, but he didn't know it. Darrell Walter trying to get by Jeremy Mayfield. Jeremy had just gone the lap down right before the caution came out. Now Bobby Labonte trying to work to the inside of Jeremy. There you go, get his mom. Here's Steve Grissom. They're getting that flat right front change. They have done so. Steve rolls back out of the Cartoon Network Chevy. Ooh, Dale Jarrett and, and Jeff Burton got together coming off the turn two, but it's a crash up here in turn three, four. Oh, and Bobby oh, Hamilton. Oh. Man, oh, man. It, it, it's so fast and the groove is so narrow, there's just no place to go. Just exactly what you guys talked about at the beginning of the show as they come back to the line. Wally Dallenbach trying but failing to get a lap back. And so a couple of more cars are damaged. Kenny Wallace and especially Bobby Hamilton. I mentioned that situation between Dale Jarrett and Jim Burton. As they came off the turn two, Jarrett was following Burton and uh, he got into it a little bit. Burton's car got a little bit sideways and then he went down to the inside track. Burton did, but they didn't. They both took up straight out and went on. We can see some pretty serious damage to the square D car. When the left front tire is knocked off like that, that means the suspension is going to be bent more than likely. Let's see if we can tell exactly what happened with Kenny Wallace. We see Hutt Strickland down on the inside, some contact. Kenny goes up the racetracks, tries his best to save it, makes some contact with the outside wall, comes down, car's going by, and the scoreboard's going to get in the way, I do believe. But Bobby Hamilton's going to come along right there and makes a hit. We'll get the impact of Hamilton and Wallace from a better angle right here. There's Earnhardt, and I think Ward Burton barely does make some contact. Maybe not. But here there's no place for Hamilton to go because Jeff Bodine, he drives up right in the left front with his right front. Mm. From Michael Waltrip's uh, in-car roof cam. Hamilton's impact just to the left of uh, Michael as he came around. He was unscathed, but there from the uh, in-car camera, is the work that's going on at Bobby Hamilton and Kenny Wallace's car is being taken behind the wall for repairs. 43 laps completed out of 500.
Oh, okay. I don't remember. It's been so long ago. <laughs> <clears throat> right. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. How does it how does it start? I'll I'll help you do it, Bob. I just Dave, the new one-and-a-half-mile oval is alongside Interstate 35 near Fort Worth. Workers have been there since last year. Thanks, Dave. <laughs> no. Thanks, Dave. The new one-and-a-half-mile oval is alongside Interstate 35 near Fort Worth. Workers have been there since last year on the 950 acres, which is quickly becoming a major motorsports facility. It'll be the second largest in America with more than 150... We can probably just voice it live if you want to. Okay. Okay. Welcome back to ESPN Speed World. Today from Bristol International Raceway in Tennessee, the Food City 500 under caution for the second time. 45 laps completed. This is the bumper cam on the pole sitter and current leader, Mark Martin's car, looking back on Wally Dallenbach, who is a lap down in 29th position. The men's final at the Lipton Championships, Agassi and Ivanisevich up next after the conclusion of our coverage. And then Sports Center comes along at 6 o'clock tonight. Following that at 6.30, the championship game in the Women's Basketball NCAA Tournament, and then the opening night of Sunday Night Baseball at 9 o'clock Eastern Time tonight. Here's Bill Weber. And Kenny Wallace sits in his car talking to his team owner, Philip Martasi, will lean in here. You're okay? What happened? Yeah, I'm all right. Just, you know, I don't want to blame anybody. I really don't. I guess I just, I guess I come down on the eight car a little bit. You know, I didn't know he had position on me, and, uh, just the way it is at Bristol, you just get real close here and try to get it fixed. Okay, square D car pretty badly bruised. Guys rolling through turn four, ready to take the green. He sits helplessly behind the wall getting repairs while the field comes around and takes the green flag for a restart of this event. As now Mark Martin tries to keep Wally Dolan back a lap down and will do so. You see Jeff Gordon's gotten by Darrell Walton taking the third spot. Jeremy Mayfield has fresh tires. We'll see if that's an event. Mayfield has lost a lap in 30th position. So does Jeff Burton, the 90th car. He's 31st. See Dale Earnhardt's move to the top 10. Here, Ben, is a Fran Field summary as you look for your favorite driver, whoever it might be, with their starting positions in parenthesis. Who is your favorite driver, by the way, Benny? I don't have one. <laughs> I like them all, right? I like them all. I don't care who wins. When they do win, it thrills me to death. <laughs> Sterling Marlin trying his best to get by the 31 car. And Mike Skinner. Rusty Wallace right behind Sterling. 28 cars on the lead lap. Sterling is trying to move over, get out of the mirror of the 31 car, hoping that he will move over. And, oh, and a little bump from the back and almost lifted the rear wheels off the ground. And Steve Grissom, the 29 car, more problems heading for the pits. Nice job of by Skinner. He uh, maintained control despite the fact that he got way out of shape. And he did he ever. This is Rusty's roof cam. Sterling looking to the inside again. John Kernan is with Bobby Hamilton. Bobby Hamilton sits behind the wall. A lot of front end damage on rescue team at Pontiac. Bobby, what happened? Looked like the 81 car got loose and somebody bugged him. He came down across the racetrack. We all started scrambling and I got on that black asphalt and it's not dry down there yet. I couldn't steer. I hit the brakes and just slid straight into it. Well, we said this was a concrete car. It runs well on concrete. Of course, nothing runs well on wet asphalt. Now watch this, Mike Skinner 
is now on the outside, and he's probably going to lose seven or eight spots before he can get back to the inside. There he loses one. There he loses two to Rusty Wallace. How about Earnhardt? Is he going to give his teammate any slack here? Uh, 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 he sees an opportunity to pass a race car. By the way, Richard Childress says maybe a two-car team in 96 or 97, almost definitely a two-car team in 98, but this is just a test. They're going to run a few races this Ooh. year. He got under Mike Skinner and he finally does hit the wall with the left front and he's broken the tie rod or something. The wheel won't turn and in the wall he goes and then I don't know who's got worse luck, him or Bobby Hamilton. Or Ken Schrader. Or Ken Schrader, yeah. Man, oh man. Another caution comes out as Burton's car is disabled at the bottom of the racetrack here on the main straightaway down toward turn number one. It's our third caution of the afternoon already. Skinner was trying his best to get that back to the bottom of the racetrack because he had lost. Uh, let's see one two three four positions and was about to lose that fifth. He wanted to get back to the bottom and here comes all the cars down pit road. And it's a little wet in there. Let's see if anybody has any trouble. They come into their assigned pits which of course are dry because they keep tarps down there. Here's Jerry. Right side tires going on the Valvoline Ford. They make a chassis adjustment one round the body of the car. Marcus said the car is just a little bit loose in the corner. Left side of Terry Labonte's Kellogg's Chevrolet. Here is the Valvoline car down and away. Great pit stop for Steve Mill and company. But Jeff Gordon is the first out pitting in the far end of the row. Jeff, of course, because he's the series champion from last year, gets to pick first and picks the uh, first spot off of uh, turn number one. And that is a decided advantage when you're getting in and out of the pits. Let's take a look again at why we're under caution. There we see Skinner. Earnhardt goes by. He tries to come down. And we see Ward Burton's wheels are forced out on the left side. Wheels are forced out on the blacktop. And he comes up makes contact with Skinner and tries his best to keep off Skinner when he does that spins his car. Is that the way you see it there man? Yep and, and his left wheel hit the inside wall and here it is again. He gets all along up to the door and then they make contact and around Ward goes and his left front wheel the tire itself is going to hit that wall and that's what's going to do the biggest damage. He'll have some sheet metal damage, but uh, I think he broke a tie rod or something like that. Tell you what, Skinner did a great job in saving that car. And Rudd just barely missed the back end of Ward's car. Now watch the left front wheel what Ned's talking about. It's going to hit the wall right there and yep. just damages that thing severely. So Ward Burton is behind the wall and fixing the damage. 61 laps are now complete. We'll take another break from Bristol, Tennessee. Skinner did not pit. First time ever led a Winston Cup race for Skinner and Winston Cup. Yeah. You said he's been in 12 races. This is the first one he's ever led. Oh. Not me, baby. Uh, nobody. I don't think. Where is he? Got Wallen, Dolan back and uh, Burton back in the day. Back. That's right. With better tires, with better tires than uh, Skinner has. The second car must have just only changed two tires, man. He put him in the back and went into. I saw him go into this. Missed about a lap and a 
have a couple of cars who have gotten laps back, namely Jeff Burton and Wally Dallenbach. The leader of the race is Mike Skinner. We talked earlier about how Mark Martin led for the first time this year. This is the first time that Mike Skinner has ever led a NASCAR Winston Cup race. And Skinner decided not to bid during that last caution flag, and he ends up... But what you meant was that these fellows are on the tail end of the lead lap, right? right? Because they're in front of Mike Skinner, the leader. Here comes Rusty. Alongside Ted Musgrave as they go wheel to wheel into the corner. And Hut Strickland, the A-car circuit, City car, got a good run going today. Sure does. Here comes Sterling Marlin as the Musgrave car goes up the banking and loses more spots. Spencer, the 23 car, dives to the inside. There's Jeff Bodine, the seven car. He put it on the backstretch. Evidently, he only changed two tires because he was able to get back on the racetrack in front of Jeff Gordon. Here's Mark Martin in seventh spot. Up ahead is Gordon. of the race spins and oh almost at another involvement but I believe everybody gonna survive. Wow and there is no caution. No caution flag and some damage to the rear of Skinner's car. He's trying to camouflage that thing. <laughs> now Bill Elliott becomes the leader. And Skinner heads for Pedro. Let's see if he goes out in turn three. Goes in the corner just goes sideways. Up the hill he goes and backs around the fence. Bill Elliott did not pit on this last stop. He he did, last caution, he did make a pit stop a little bit earlier. Joe Nemechek also had contact with the wall because he is in the pit area. Out on the, uh, the uh, back stretch. Back stretch. See some heavy damage to the left front of his car. See where they're pulling the fender off the tire now. We'll see if we can find out what happened with Nemechek from our speed shot. Oh, yeah, he hit it pretty good coming off the fourth corner. Yeah, he and Derek Cope looked like made some contact as he exited the corner. Skinner rolls out. Back in the race. And Jerry is with Ward Burton. Ward standing and watching him work on the NBNA Pontiac. Ward, incredible. If you didn't have any bad luck, you wouldn't have any at all. What happened out there? I guess they're just racing. I just wish I'd get the monkey off my back. I know you got to be frustrated. How bad is the car hurt? That sure didn't help it any. I think it's some of the front suspension. We'll get it fixed get back out there. Well, Ward standing very stoically watching as they're trying to piece this car together two weeks in a row. I mean, what kind of luck can this team have? Please, Jerry said stand stoic because that means... I think that means a good turn. Jeff Gordon working on Jeff Bodine. Mark Martin right behind him watching that. I guess Pinsley would be a, a good turn for that also. I don't know what that means either. No, I don't know what that means. <laughs> you know, Jeff Bodine's missing part of his rear bumper. Yeah, he is. Man, see that left side of it's gone. Yep. He must have been in some kind of shunt before. See, if he had that rear bumper, he would probably hit him right there. Since he don't have the bumper, he missed him. Well, the bumper's there. It's just been jammed up in, under the car. Yeah. And look how close they are. <laughs> that rear bumper has the perfect shape of the front end of another car. You know what? Yeah, we could probably look at the, at the paint on the bumper and find out who it is. Huh? Sterling Marlin and... Dale Earnhardt are running right together with Hutt Strickland and Daryl Waldrop. This yep. is 11th, 12th, 13th, and 14th. Evidently, they did something exciting because all the fans stood up and yelled just a moment ago. I think Earnhardt was trying to pass on the outside of Marlin, and the fans rose from their seats. Back, meanwhile, to Bodine and Gordon. <laughs> Boy, Jeff looked like he had a good run there, but couldn't get the job done.
Terry Labonte is catching up to this group. Pretty good distance from Terry back to the next car, which is Robert Presley, and he has been holding up Rob, Rob, Rusty Wallace, and now he moves over and let Rusty go. Just a two-point. Oh, now this yes. is going to be interesting here now. Got this. <laughs> Boy, what a good move by Jeff Gordon. Now and he lost, lost a spot to uh, Mark Martin. He's lucky to bring a race car back. Exactly. Here's Bill Weber with Mike Skinner. Great qualifying run, but you're behind the wall early. What happened? Well, I'll tell you, the real tree uh, camouflage, Monte Carlo, was running awfully good. We missed the pit stop. We stayed out. We was leading the race. And uh, I was arcing the car real high, getting in the corner, because it was real tight, trying to get it to turn. I just got the right rear up in that wet stuff up there. Long. But you wish you pitted now. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, we sure do. And yeah, that's Mike Skinner. They're really working hard to get this thing back out there. And this is a really good little battle here among Bodine, Martin, and Jeff Gordon. You can see that the interval between the first and the sixth place car is only 2.4 seconds. And Jeff Gordon, I think, started to try to pass on the outside in turn three last lap. Well, I just saw way back in the field that Ricky Craven passed Dale Jarrett on the outside. That was a pretty impressive situation. So maybe that second group might be uh, coming in. Coming huh? in. Martin once again takes a look on the inside. And Terry Labonte has joined this battle. Where might we have another battle? Here it is. Marlin still running back there with uh, Strickland, Earnhardt, Aaron Walker, and the half the field. Yeah, yeah. and others. And yeah, that's a long line right there. Robert Presley. Yeah, he was up in front of it for a while back. Preston Wallace got around him. Rusty has driven away. Bobby Romani got around the car number 33 of Robert Presley. He hasn't driven away that much. Now DW goes on the inside. Oh, he's down here in the wet, but he saved it. Now it's a little bit of contact. I'm telling you what, he had two tires on that black stuff. And that's not the place to be. We've seen today that's really not a good place to race. About to get a lap back from Bill Elliott, trying to while we watch this action. For Steve Grissom, so that's not a significant situation. Got some debris on the uh, straightaway here. Don't know what it is, but uh, it's rolling around out there. Looks like it's to the inside of the groove. There's, there's Steve Grissom trying his best. And here comes Rick Mast. Well, he might have changed drivers. Nope, he's, he's still in there. Still he's still in the car. But he's left down, so he's trying to get that uh, left back. No, he's, nope, he's, no, he's second. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm looking at the wrong one. And Trickle in number 19 is third. So we got at least uh, two guys who were at the back of the pack a while ago, but because they didn't come in, are uh, right up there. And now Bodine and Terry Labonte are battling together. Yeah, we, Mark Martin has been able to get by Jeff Bodine. Also, Jeff Gordon's been able to get by. Terry Labonte is trying his best to get by, not been able to. He's finally got a run now. Yep. Jeff is going to try to hold the spot as long as he can. They love coming off the corner, but Terry goes around. And Rusty will try to come right in there as well, and he does. And here comes Wally Dollar back. And he's the one that's won that thing. Yes. Wow. A little mixed up there, Wally. Sorry about that, Rick Mass fans. The leader of the race is... Bill Elliott, first time that he's led here at Bristol since this race in 89. Michael Walton, the sit car, cars. He looks back at Kyle Petty. This is a camera from inside Kyle's car. On the right front fender, as a matter of fact, of Kyle Petty's car. It's a great shot. You can get a good perspective of speed there. Mike Skinner is finished for the day. First car officially out of the race. Darrell Walter was on the inside of Robert Presley. He goes by. Hus Strickland goes by. Looks like the line is going by. There we see Robert Earnhardt goes by. Sterling Marlin. Here comes Jimmy Spencer. Michael Walter. Robert said, man, oh man, quit. <laughs> Give me a break. Somebody cut me some slack. Give me a couple of more before he gets a chance to get to the inside. Yeah. Now my idiot. Now there it is. He's back. 
at the inside. All right, it's Elliott, Rick Mass, Jeff Gordon has moved up to third, then Mark Martin and Rick Dittrick. Well, your top five after exactly 100 of the 500 laps in the Food City 500. We'll be right back. That's right, exactly. I mean, it's, a, it's really a good shot. Uh, Peter knows guys, Larry, are to be committed. That's a great shot. Committed. Com committed to a uh, institution of something. <laughs> if, if there's one car on the racetrack, Ned, if he can't hit it, Neil, I'm sorry, but I. You know, we've been following that battle, and I just wanted to get that in. He's producing against the race. Post. I was producing against him. I'll do that tomorrow. <laughs> okay, here's second place. Third place. Oh, wait a minute. He's lost his I got him. I got him. But why is that? Big time, too, by his teammate. No, he's not losing any. He's just, he's just uh, frustrated right now. See who he's racing with. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yep. we are. <laughs> are both. Way to hang on, Bill. Yeah. Bristol International Raceway, where ESPN Speed World covering the Food City 500, presented by Budweiser, official sponsor of the 1996 Olympic Summer Games. This Bud's for you. By Pennzoil, the motor oil that works like liquid ball bearings by the more than 1,250 AutoZone stores across America. AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts. We got a new leader. There he is, Jeff Gordon. The DuPont Automotive Finishes, Journal A. Just a couple laps ago, passed Bill Elliott to take over the lead. And here's how it happened. He, coming off the second corner, the 29 car of Steve Grissom. Moved over, let these fellas go. Elliott. Moves high and just lets Jeff Gordon go on. And Jeff becomes our fourth leader of the day. Uh, he has much fresher tires than does uh, Bill Elliott. Bill stopped some 20 laps before these others. Uh-oh, Daryl's uh, kind of somebody in the nose. I yep, thought I saw is. that a, a few laps ago. It might be hurting his car because Michael drove by fairly easily. Put Daryl back to 14. Understand that he got to the back of the 33 car a few laps ago. Dale Jarrett is uh, struggling a little bit back here in 20th position. Well, he's struggling in traffic. He's been trying to get by his teammate Ernie Irvin for about 20 laps, and now Jeff Burton has called him and gone around to Jerry. They've uh, been really going at it back there as Mark Martin goes in the second around Bill Ellen. In the Fram Field summary. rejoining the competition. He's been behind the ball for 73 laps. There are 26 cars still on the lead lap with 115 laps completed. Stay in the lead lap, but it was not to be. Here's Jeff Burton trying to get past Ernie Irvin. That's for 21st position, and Dale Jarrett also joins the fight along with Gary Cope. This car seems to be just a little 
little bit loose. I've seen it wiggle a number of times. He's holding her right down on the inside, protecting his groove. Here at Bristol, he won the fall race in 1990. Yeah, we see Earnhardt trying to get by Hutstrick, and we've seen Hutstrick now. Here, yeah, looks like he's got a move, got a run. Yeah, Hut kind of opened the door a little bit. It was enough to give Earnhardt the position, and now here comes Jimmy Spencer right behind Dale. And Michael Walker's going to go by as well. And is Daryl going by? Probably. Hutstrick is really wicked up high. Jimmy Spencer's car, the 23 car, looks to me like it's running pretty doggone good today. You see Hutz tripping. Here's Rusty Wallace inside of Rick Mast, and Rusty goes to fourth. Two passing one, followed by five. Does that make sense? Yes. <laughs> there we see. Back to this battle again. It's Ernie Irvin. Jeff Burton, the 99 car, earning 28, and Dale Jarrett in the 88. Now, now Burton's got a run on Ernie going into turn three. Oh, Ernie comes oh, down. Oh, oh. Yeah. They make contact. That's one way to do it, huh? <laughs> man, oh man, he's going to lose. Ernie's going to lose lots of spots now. And he's lucky he did not spin up in the corner. Yeah, he did a great job, but the leader is going to run on him. He's going to put him to left down if he's not careful. That's going out of the pits. And that's scheduled pit stop for the Remington Arms. So we're going to 75. And look at Jeff Burton go by and Schrader. Oh, Schrader, I forgot he's crashed. That's right. Yeah. But we're still continuing to follow this battle here between the Jeff and Jeff Burton. They're running 19 to 20. Battle for third now. Bill Elliott and Rusty Wallace no longer a battle as Rusty takes over that third spot. And Terry Labonte is coming up as well. Bill Elliott doing a great job. He's, as I mentioned before, he's been out there for a while on those tires. Bill Elliott also a former winner here at Bristol. He won this race back in 1988. And here comes Jeff Gordon. There he's driving by his teammate, Ken Schrader, and Wally Dallenbach tries to do likewise, and he does. And Mark Martin will be going by on the outside. Looks like Mark might be just a little bit faster than Jeff Gordon. He appears to me like he's gained just a little bit. We'll see how Dusty Wallace is doing to the leader. The 3.02 seconds, you see, that's the difference between Jeff Gordon and the third-place car of Dusty Wallace. Kyle Petty, this is the camera aboard Kyle Petty's car, the Briggs and Stratton onboard cameras. He tries to get around Darrell Walker. Walker's car just will not stay on the bottom of the racetrack. Watch when he goes in and up the racetrack it goes. And then he comes back down the racetrack. <laughs> Ernie Irvin just went a lap there. A little skitter up the racetrack cost him a lot of time on the racetrack. And finally, the Kyle Petty gets by. I just said Bridge and Terry. Now well, it's the Coors uh, sponsor. Good job, buddy. Good job. And Darrell loses another position as Ricky Craven, so that puts Darrell back to 17th now, and Robert Presley is right there to see if he can pick up a position on Darrell Waltrip. Darrell's car, the chassis, just the handle is just gone away on the Western Auto Chevrolet. Just cannot keep it on the bottom of the racetrack. He'd like to see a caution right now. He doesn't want to be hard on it. Again, the, the total pole on the left side of your screen is the top ten. It's a scoring pylon, not a total pole. Oh, scoring pylon. Yes. And the line between the one and the nineteen, that's just to distinguish between fifth and sixth. Because I, have, I can't add them up all that way. That's trouble. right. This was done strictly for Benny's purposes because he can't keep them straight as you go down to six, seven, and eight. Bernard picked up another spot. Goes up to ninth. Robert Presley has. Not yet picked off his position ahead of him. 
Darrell Walters trying to back on the bottom side of the racetrack. You see now he's on the bottom. It was good to see Darrell with a smile on his face again. Came into this race very optimistic with a good qualifying effort and Jeff Hammond back in the fold. He was delighted during that, after that qualifying run on Friday afternoon. Here's more from Dr. Punch. Speaking, speaking of Jeff Hammond, DW, and, and Jeff just talked a minute ago, and, and Jeff Hammond told me that since Darrell ran into the back of the four car trying to slow down on that caution a little while ago and got the damage on the front of the car, the car will just not stick in the corners. You see the front of the damage on the front of that car number 17? But when they go in the corners, DW said the car just skates up across the racetrack, but will not even grip the racetrack, so he's had to back out quite a bit. Yeah, that's pretty obvious. He's doing a little bit better now than he was a few laps ago. Car a little bit better, but uh, not a whole lot. And Jeff Burton and uh, the 88 car of Dale Jarrett also come up to do battle. Now here's another battle for 7th, 8th, 9th, and 10th. There's a 10th place car, Bobby Labonte. Earnhardt, Marlin, and Jeff Bodine up ahead. Understand that Bill Elliott may have a problem, right, John? Well, Bob, just a few laps ago, Bill radioed in and told his crew chief Mike Beam that there was something wrong with the motor. They switched the ignition boxes. That didn't help, but they noticed that the temperature gauge, the engine temperature running very high. So they've got a water hose over the wall. They're waiting to see how long Bill can stay out there, hoping to get a caution so they can bring the car in. Fill the radiator back up with water. They think they might have a possible water leak. Well, Bell was leading the race after the caution because uh, he didn't uh, make a pit stop. He slid back now to 14th spot. Bill Elliott, and there he is just ahead of Hutz Strickland. As a matter of fact, he just passed the eight car, I believe, to take over that position. So. Yeah, I saw him pull down low on the racetrack a little bit ago. Several cars passed him, and then he got back up into the roof. So maybe he is um, okay. Right behind this group is Kyle Petty in 15th. This is the Briggs and Strat camp at BP. I thought they were all Briggs and Strat. What do I know? <laughs> Look at the tag over there on the left. Does it get up to about 8,000 RPM? Yeah, 8. Maybe 81, 82. Yes, it does. There's down to 7,000 and back on the gas. It only goes, drops to about 7,000 RPM. Man, can you imagine that from no. 500 laps? It's about 6,500 down in that corner. 145 of the 500 completed right now. We've got Jeff Gordon up front with Mark Martin, Terry Labonte, Rusty Wallace, and Rick Mast. There in 6 through 10. Chevron ran around real slow for a while and now it's going again. Mm -hmm. Let's stop and change tires. He did make a pit stop, yes.
to lead the Food City 500, and he's trying desperately to put a lap on Robert Presley, who's running in 20th position, and I believe he finally gets the job done. He's been running behind Robert for several laps, not able to do so, but now he positions the DuPont Chevy to the inside, and Presley goes a lap down in 20th. And you saw the nose of Mark March come into picture just a moment ago. He is in second place. There he is, and just not that far behind Jeff Gordon. He was able to, to gain some of the distance that Jeff was ahead when it took Jeff about five laps to get around Robert Preston. See Morgan Shepard in the Remington car. He was running slow a moment ago, stopped and pissed off, so now he's running okay. There's a battle for third spot, and Rusty Wallace has closed up and has almost caught Terry Labonte. I'm sure he called, won't you? <laughs> I think he's pretty much there, you know. Rusty very optimistic going into this race. We see Ricky Rudd up in front of those cars, a lap down nine, the tied four. Here's a grand field summary again. Rusty Wallace has won five times on this racetrack. Most recently in 1994, the fall race. He's won this event four times, and as we brought out before his first win was here. Here's Jeff Burton and Strickland. And you see that Burton has just now moved into the 16th spot, 15th spot. I think Hutt's car has gotten very, very loose in the last few laps. Ricky Craven got by Hutt, Dale Jarrett got by, and he's how he has his hands full right now. And the leader is not too far behind him, maybe a second and a half. And just about to go a lap down is Daryl Walter, who started in third position. The handling of that car has just totally gone away on him, and Jeff Gordon is pouncing on him just about to trying to put Daryl a lap down. I think Jerry Punch reported just a moment ago that the downforce has gone on the nose of the Western Auto Chevrolet from that damage we see on the hood, and I think that was a very good point, and one reason that Daryl Walter's car is just not handling as well as it did. Third and fourth, Levine and Wallace. Takes over that third spot down in turn one. Jerry Labonte has not led a lap here today, but he came into this race as the leader in laps in 1996, having been at the front for 345 circuits at the five race tracks that we have competed on. And there's the interval between that group and second place, Mark Martin. How about our points leader, Dale Jarrett? He's back in 16th position behind Craven and Petty. Yeah, I said that the 19th car was in 14th a moment ago. He, in fact, is running 17th now as Jeff Burton. I made a mistake, Bob. Well, I'm sure it hurts me here. He was too good. 100 laps they've been since that last that pit stop. Yeah, and a lot of cars sliding around out there, too, big as yes. a Dale Jarrett trying his best to get by Ricky Craven because they know the leader is coming up behind him. The leader, Jeff Gordon, is only about a second behind him, so they need to move on. There you see Jeff came into the picture there pretty quickly as these guys battle for 13th, 14th, and 15th. Ricky Craven fourth in the points. Leader by 47 over Earnhardt. Now Jarrett has an opportunity. Nope, nope. couldn't make He's it. He's going to lose an opportunity. Yep. Nope. Nope. Jeff Gordon, Jeff Burton backed off. A while ago, Dale Jarrett was actually turning laps better than the leader of the race, but now he's mired in traffic. There is the leader, by the way, and he's not all that great a distance behind. Once again, those cars that we were looking at just a moment ago, Kyle Petty, Ricky Craven, Dale Jarrett, Jeff Burton, they know that the leader is coming. They can see him in the rearview mirror, and also the crews are telling him. And they're all praying, please, let's have a caution flag. Please, so, won't somebody throw a beer can on the racetrack? Or, I mean, let's have a caution flag so we can catch up, change these tires, make some adjustments. Actually, almost a sunny uh, day right now as the clouds are beginning to part just a little bit. 
after a rain that delayed the start of this race. But things are looking pretty good right now, although there is somewhere between a 70 and a 90 percent chance of rain, they say, in this area later this afternoon. There's Gordon first. There goes Martin second. Rusty. And here comes the sixth place car, now seventh place car on Dale Earnhardt. Running sixth is Rick Mast. And it's 8.07 seconds between first and seventh. Here's John Kernan. We expect a four tire change for Bill Elliott. Remember we reported that Bill said something fairly wrong with the motor, the temperature had gone up. Well, just a few laps ago, about 10 laps ago actually, Bill said everything looks all right. The motor now feels all right. The motor completed right side, right side is going on. It looks like a pretty good pit stop for Bill Elliott. Four tires, no chassis adjustment. Elliott rolls back out of the racetrack, and we also understand that the 43 car of Bobby Hamilton is going out to resume the battle after 133 laps in the pits. Now, Dale Jarrett has cleared Jeff Burton, so we'll see now if... Uh, cleared Ricky Craven. They, uh, Jeff Burton was right yeah. there with him, right on Jarrett's bumper. And now he's coming up on some of other traffic as Earnhardt goes around Rick Mask and takes over the sixth position. And we can see that Earnhardt is closing up, building up. He was 805 in 786, and now he's back to 803. Once again, traffic as he passed Rick Mast. He lost two tenths to the leader. Traffic is very, very difficult at the Bristol International Raceway. Now Dale Jarrett has traffic ahead of him as we see Joe Nemechek move to the inside of uh, Mast. All three of those cars, Jeff Burton, Dale Jarrett, and Kyle Petty, wanted so much to stay in the lead lap. Right now, if they can get one. Kyle Petty is 13th, Jared 14th, and Jeff Burton is 15th. Here's like Dale Jared has a pretty good race car today. Kenny Schrader moves over, lets him go by. Rick Mast gives up his seventh position to come in for a pit stop. Now he's another one of those that pivoted on the caution that Bill Elliott did, so this would be a scheduled pit stop for him. Off sequence for most of the others, but it would be a scheduled stop for him. I saw a pretty serious chassis adjustment on that Hooters Pontiac. Bill Elliott has fresh tires on his car. You can see that he's moved around both uh, Jeff Gordon and Jeff Burton. Kyle Petty back in, jumped out of the end of the second corner. We see right now that Jeff Burton has got his hands full trying to keep Jeff Gordon mind, and that's let these fellows drive away a little bit. Well, now Jeff Gordon has passed Jeff Burton, so he's put him a lap down. Now there are just 13 cars, 12 cars, actually, on the lead lap. And Jeff Burton dies in the pits as soon as the leader goes by. So Burton comes in as Jeff Gordon continues to lead the Food City 500. 319 laps to go back after these messages.
back at Bristol International Raceway here in Tennessee, where Jeff Gordon leads the Food City 500 ESPN beginning its seventh year of Sunday night baseball tonight at 9 o'clock with an exclusive opening night matchup between the White Sox and Seattle. Mariners, of course, coming off a memorable playoff, defeating the Angels in a game and then knocking off the Yankees in five. Nine o'clock tonight, baseball season opens here on ESPN. Jeff Gordon continues to lead, but Rusty Wallace has moved into second place, putting Mark Martin back to third. Now there are only 11 cars on the lead lap. And the interval between first and second is 1.93 seconds. Jeff Burton uh, is on fresh tires in the 99. Now it's 2.04 seconds between first and second. And he just dived on the inside of Rusty Wallace. Steve Grissom also with fresh tires. And Rusty wisely backs off, lets him go. He will lose a lot of time between, him, second. between himself and the leader, but he still has a car. You understand Ward Burton is, uh, they're pushing his car back out on pit road, so he's going to re-enter the race. He said during the interview after he got knocked out of the race that he would repair it and come back in. Crash over in turn one, 33 car, Robert Presley, and no caution. There's no caution. There's no caution. A lot of cars are slamming on the brakes, but no caution and no other car involved. And that's bunched up the field. Look at this. Man. There we see Elliot, Dale Jarrett, Ernie Irvin. Jarrett and others came close to getting the caution they needed, but it did not fall. And now here is Jeff Gordon to the inside of Ernie. Gordon Shepard is taking his car behind the wall. Lake Speed is back in the race. He's 168 laps down. Here's the spin. And around he goes, does a 360, doesn't hit anything. Derek Cope hits, heads to the infield trying to dodge. There's our lead of the race, Jeff Gordon, number 24, DuPont Automotive finishes the sponsor. The 99 car and Steve Grissom both able to get by Jeff Gordon, the leader. And Rusty Wallace has had enough. He's coming into the pits. Jerry Punch, he's coming toward you. Scheduled pit stop for Rusty Wallace in the Miller January Draft for Thunderbird. He will, he will get four tires. DW just couldn't wait any longer. Heavy front damage on DW's car. They're trying to clean some debris away from the grill. DW is down the way. Meanwhile, left side tires going up on Rusty Wallace, the five-time winner. Remember, Rusty said, I got something for today. He was proving it there. This is a scheduled pit stop. Let's go to Bill Weber. Ernie Irvin has been fighting a tight race car. He's gone in front of the pit road. A four-tire change. They've made a chassis adjustment. Got plenty of fuel in. The Haviland Ford on his way back to the chase. Terry Cope is on pit road for a scheduled stop as Ernie Irvin builds up speed. Now he can, after clearing the pits, there is Derry Cope. Is oh, got a trouble. trouble. Trouble on the right side. They, had to, they took the jack back around. Now they got to come back to the right side. Oh, man. Bill, can you see what's going on? Exactly as you called it, Benny. They had trouble with the right rear. Now Derek repositions the car. They're going to have to push it back into the stall before they can work on the left side tire. Meanwhile, Sterling Marlin and Terry Labonte both hit pit road. They dive around Kenny Wallace in the turn for the race. They work on the left side of the 12. He's away down pit road to Dr. Bunch. Terry Labonte still on his course like Chevrolet comes in for routine service. Heavy duty damage being done to the windshield. They're really scrubbing that windshield. Right side car, good right side car change. Left side Jack Lunder, no chance he gets it for Labonte. Let's go to Bill Weber in the Earnhardt pit. Right side tires already on the Goodrich Chevrolet. They clean the windshield, fill it with fuel. Terry Labonte returns to the track. Marlin on his way. Left side tires on the three. Trouble with the left rear working on it. They got it on. Dale Earnhardt back in the race. Mark Martin coming out. 
as Jeff Gordon comes in. Jerry, he's making his way slowly toward you. Slowly is right, Bob Dickens. 35 miles an hour, and he has a huge hole in the front grill. Take a look at the hole in the very front grill of this new pot, Jimmy Monte Carlo. The wire screen has been punched away as they have changed right side cars. I'm not sure the crew has seen it yet. They do have a patch back here behind the wall, but they have yet to patch it. And now they wipe some of the debris away, change left side cars, he is down and away, and Bill Dale Jarrett is with you. He's got fresh right side rubber. Now they're working on the left side. The front of the quarter to care for it. A little bit of it, but not too bad. Here, waits on the left rear. It's on. He's gone to the back pitch to John and Michael Walter. Four tire change for Michael Walter. No chassis adjustment to get the run much tied. A four tire change. Jeff O'Dine also in for four tires, as was Kyle Petty. Let's go to Jerry Bobby Labonte's pitch. Right side tires on the interstate battery, Chevy Monte Carlo. Jimmy Maycar crew scramble around. Great change of right side tires. One can of fuel in, second can going in. Now trouble with the left front. The air gun quit. Now they can pick it back up, and Bobby is down and away. A flurry of pit stop activity. Labonte picked up the lead there for a oh, oh, two and Jeff Gordon and Michael Walter almost coming off turn four. They come out of the pits a few laps. About the time Gordon and Dale Jarrett came out of the pits. You see Dale Jarrett behind Michael Walter, so right now Jeff Gordon would have Dale Jarrett to lap down. That's exactly right, Denny. In fact, he's got uh, he's gonna be there's only gonna be about six or seven cars on the lead lap now. Let's go to the pits, cover Sterling Marlin's pit. Sterling Marlin has returned to pit road. They're working on the right side. They must have had a bad right side tire. He got two new tires, went back in. Big, big, costly move for the four bunch. So Man. the leader is Ricky Rudd, is that correct? Yep. You are scoring. Yeah, that's right. He has not made a pit stop yet. Rusty second, and Labonte is third. Look at Gordon's before and after the pit stop. Yeah, it picks up about eight miles an hour, almost seven and a half miles an hour. Now you understand, folks, why these guys will run ten laps to cost the play come out. They dive in upon four new tires. Those new tires are just so much faster than a used tire. Ricky Rudd stretching it as far as he can. He has the lead of this race at the moment, but needs a pit stop. Rusty Wallace second. Then Jeff Gordon, Mark Martin fourth, and Dale Earnhardt is fifth at Bristol. There's Rusty. He got out ahead of uh, Jeff Gordon, and so is the leader. The Miller Genuine Draft Pit Crew for a job well done. Picked up a couple of seconds, and that was the difference between being first and being, right and being behind the 24 car of Jeff Gordon. Gordon trying to go to the inside of Hud Strickland. He's running ninth, the lap down. There are eight cars on the lead lap. Here's third place, Mark Martin. Pole sitter eligible for $121,600 in Unicow bonus money. And looking for Dale Earnhardt, there he is, fourth place car. Now we'll look for the fifth place car, which happens to be car number five, driven by Terry Labonte. His brother, Bobby Labonte, as you can see. From our scoring pile on, is in sixth spot. Rick Mast is seventh. Dick Trickle is eighth. Michael Walker is ninth. And Hutch Trickle is tenth. There's a two-second separation between Rusty and Jeff, first and second. There's the 18 car. Sixth place car at this time of the race, the Interstate Battery Chevrolet. Had his best finish in 1996 at Darlington last week, where he came in runner up after some uh, last lap scrambling because of fuel. Ricky Rudd and Bill Elliott just made contact up in turn four. No big harm done, excepting Elliott got past. 
I would imagine that as long as this car continues to perform as well as it has for Rick Mass, that he no longer has the flu. Is that correct? <laughs> no, he still got the flu, but uh, he didn't act like it. it makes it makes it better, doesn't it? Yeah. Makes it feel better. Here's John Kernan with more on that. Yeah, I was talking with Rick this morning. He said he felt much better today than he did yesterday. He said that he would get the car and drive for as long as he could. And whenever he felt that he couldn't give the car a good ride, then he'd pull in, get out, and let David Green. Well, Richard Jackson just told me, he said, yeah, the car's not exactly perfect the way Rick would like to have it, but it's good enough to where Rick is enjoying himself despite the fact that he feels pretty sick still. Doing a great job. Well, Dick Trickle just went a lap down, so there are now seven cars that are on the lead lap. And the next one to go a lap down would be Rick Mask. And I'm sure that Lloyd Allen, sitting back in Raleigh, North Carolina, watching this race, would love to be in that 19 car. Just patience, Lloyd, patience. Just like these drivers are doing today, he'll be there. Oh, yeah. He'll be back. Jeff Gordon led 205 laps of this 500 lapper in winning last year. He has led over 100 of the first 234 in this one. But right now, Rusty Wallace is the man out front. Dale Jarrett is a lap down, but uh, Ned, he's right now as he's, fast as Rusty Wallace. He's, he's faster, Benny. He's actually gaining on Rusty right now. He passed Jeff Gordon about 10 laps ago and has uh, pulled away five car lengths from, from Jeff. Now he's got Dick Trickle to race for position there. Trickle is in eighth place, and Jarrett is in uh, ninth place. Both of them left down. Dale Jarrett started dead last and has worked his way up to ninth spot. And without the benefit of a lot of caution like there has been a couple, but we've been racing now for quite some time without a caution flag. So yeah, we're from. Uh, 200 laps, about 180 some laps since we had a car. We're real close to the halfway point of this race. And uh, there is a trickle going up the banking, and both uh, Jared and Gordon are going to sneak by underneath. Now that allowed Rusty to pull away a little bit. Jared closed it down to within a second, but now Rusty has been able to pull away a little bit to one and a half seconds. Rusty is without doubt the king of the short tracks. Well, he has a fabulous record on the short tracks. Trying to grab it. But you said at the top of the show, his average finish is three or something? Yeah. Over how many races? Like 28 or 27 or 28 races? Five, I believe. There it is. Third place average finish in the last 25 short track races. Dave Earnhardt, ninth. Amazing. Guys are in the top five right now, so uh, this is a typical short track race, huh? <laughs> Rusty Wallace leads with Jeff Gordon running second. We'll take another break and be right back with more of the Food City 500. Point and Rusty Wallace is the leader of the Food City 500. There are six cars on the lead lap. Jeff Gordon running second, then Mark Martin, Dale Earnhardt, Terry Labonte, and Bobby Labonte. Now look at Jeff Gordon and Rusty Wallace's laps here, laps 242 through 246. 1.6 second interval on lap 242 and 8 tenths of a second on 246. Rusty Wallace comes off the corner. There is one more lap to halfway. And information, of course, an auto zone on track interval, and we're looking for the cross flags indicating we have reached the halfway point of this race, and there they are. Mm -hmm. No, nope. they won't. Well, yeah, 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 it's a little bit late. Didn't, the leader didn't get it, but everybody else did. Yeah, yeah, they missed it. We are at 250, and it is now a situation where we won't come back tomorrow if it does rain, and I don't think there's really rain that close to us. One reason why everybody wants to get this race in today, in addition to, of course, the spectators that have turned out here, Rusty Wallace and Dale Earnhardt and several of the NASCAR officials are headed for Japan tomorrow. Morning. 8 o'clock in the morning, they jump on an airplane and go to Japan for a tire test for the race that comes from Suzuka. Yep. I guess, you know, it's awfully tiring physically at this racetrack and mentally, so give our guys a chance to rest while they're... That's a, that's a long ride, isn't it? Man, it is. It's about uh, 12, 14-hour flight over there. So Rusty Wallace will pick up a $10,000 
Gatorade money for the leading at the halfway point. That's pretty good. Ten thousand bucks. Wow. That's just pocket change for somebody like you, VP, huh? Yeah, Rob, I thought you were going to say Rusty. It might be pocket change for Rusty, but that's a lot of money. It's only about three thousand my career, but I won that much by winning a race. That's right. Just got around the 99 car and put Kyle in 14th position. He is a lap down, however. He's trying his best to get by Jeff Bodine in the QBC card. Kyle Petty, another car, started way in the back. Had to take the provision. Started 34th. So he's uh, doing rather well here up in 14th. Kyle having one of his best runs of the year. Ran into that tire on Steve Grissom's car. I haven't seen it anywhere. <laughs> it's got a mark on it or an one. It looks like he's on the inside of. No, didn't quite make it. That is, once again, the battle for position. The 14th position, as a matter of fact. And there we see the five car of Terry Labonte, who's currently running fifth. And driven up behind these cars and trying to get by them. Might be a lot easier said than done. Well, that's a, a lot of cars there that are running a, a pretty good clip around here. And of course, they're batting four positions. So they've caught Jimmy Spencer, who is in 13th spot. Until Ted Ellis just went two laps down. Ted Musgrave now three laps down in the 16 Family Channel Forms. There, didn't he? Sure did. Time to put that yeah, on. on the inside, I think. No, he he just couldn't get the traction off the corner. He, he had him, but he just couldn't get the traction he needed. The interval between first and fourth is 6.3 seconds. You can see there on the scoring pylon. Rusty Wallace and Dale are hard and fourth. Finish this year was 11th at Rockingham, now running 14th, and still just right behind Jeff Bodine, but can't find the opportunity to pass. Let's see how much time there is down the each straightaway here at the Bristol Race. When you see his rear lap just a moment ago, when we get to the front stretch, we'll try to count and see how much time the drivers have to relax. Let's see. 1,001, 1,000, almost, uh, almost two seconds. In here. Almost two seconds were able to relax. Out of 16 seconds it takes to get around the racetrack. Car on the bottom. Like I said, slow car on the bottom. 43 car. Now, so that's not a slow car, that's dead. Clear. Clear. Now run 200 laps under green. And really, Betty, that's the least of the physical problems created by this racetrack. Because when you go into that banking, your head, I imagine, weighs like a ton, doesn't it? I don't know how many Gs that you pull going in the corner, but it is considerable. And whatever it is, if your head weighs 16 pounds and you pull five Gs, then I guess it's weighing 50 or 60 pounds. Plus, you got so much centrifugal force here, too. You're not only pushing down on your body, but you're pushing sideways on it, too. It's tough. There's Jeff Gordon, who's running in second spot. And there is the interval between first and second. Jeff is closing the gap. Yeah, he is. He, he passed Dale Jarrett now and he's pulled away from him. We'll take another break. Stand by for more from Bristol, Tennessee. The NASCAR Winston Cup race, 274 laps completed now, and the leader is Rusty Wallace. We're watching from the move cam of Kenny Schrader, who got knocked around like a hockey puck earlier in the race. And speaking of hockey, do you like that transition? Oh, I want to say, uh, Tuesday night at 7.30, the last two Stanley Cup champions face off for the fourth time this season. Messier and the Rangers, and Martin Brodeur and the Devils go at it at 7.30 on ESPN Tuesday night. 
you're a wrestling fan, a hockey fan, what sport don't you like there, Jenkins? Well, there's very few that I don't like. Racing's at the top, but uh, it's close between those two you just mentioned. Bobby Labonte, you see him up in front of Rusty Wallace there, about to go a lap down. Labonte is running in the sixth position. Man, look at Rusty steering that thing as yeah. he comes off the corner. Fighting her a little. Yeah, they've been, been out there a while on those tires now. They're beginning to slip around a little bit. Rusty's led 57 laps, started 11th, currently first. He's been as low as 15th. That came on lap 205. And we can see that Jeff Gordon is only 1.17, 1.21 seconds behind the leader, Rusty Wallace. And Rusty has heavy, heavy traffic in front of Not only Bobby Labonte, he has Ricky Craven up there, Joe Nemechek. A long list of cars. About a third of the field is directly in front of Rusty Wallace. Here's John Kernan on the backstretch pit. This is an unscheduled pit for Jeff Burton. It'll be right side tires and then swing around the left side. Jeff Green go in a couple laps ago. Then he felt like he had a tire going down. So rather than stay out there, possibly have one go flat sticking in the wall, they come in and pit a little extra time on the left rear tire. But Jeff Burton is down in the way. to 35 miles an hour till he clears the pits and then stands on the gas. And we can see that Jeff Gordon has almost caused Rusty Wallace because Rusty, again, is just mired in heavy traffic. He was able to get by Bobby Labonte. But now he's got Ricky Craven and Steve Grissom ahead of him as Gordon continues to close in. Ricky Craven is one lap down in 16th position. There is Dale Earnhardt, and he also is on the move. He's in third. About 10 laps ago, he moved around Mark Martin and took over third position. See how far from that third arch going to have to go to catch the lead of the race, Rusty Wallace. About four and a half seconds, Danny, but you can. It's about uh, straight away. Now look at this. The interval between first and third, Wallace and Earnhardt on five consecutive laps. That interval closed down. And now we're on the zone on track. Interval report from 5.6 seconds to 4.8. We'll start tracking it on the pylon, and it's down to 4.1. Rusty Wallace, once again, just in heavy traffic. And now only about a car length and a half separate first and second as Jeff drives right up on the back bumper now. The 41 car, Ricky Craven, is one lap down. He desperately wants to stay in front of the leader, leader if he can. He's in 16th position. Looks inside at the end of the backstretch. He's going to be able to pass him now. We'll see if Jeff comes along. Sure he will. Yep. Now here's Steve Grissom. And oh, right in front of Jeff Gordon. He tried to Man. maybe get out of the way and almost lost it. Now Rusty Wallace has Ted Musgrave and Jimmy Spencer up ahead. Musgrave is three laps down in 24th position. Spencer is uh, just one lap down in 15th position. Musgrave just pulled the side and let uh, both Rusty and Jeff pass by. Once again, we're checking the interval between Rusty Wallace, the leader of the race, the two car, and Dale Earnhardt, third place car, number three. And now we see Earnhardt is in some traffic. He was held up by Kenny Schrader just a little bit. He's now almost four seconds behind the leader. So again, it all depends on traffic, where you catch traffic and how much you have to uh, put up with traffic while you're trying to move to the front. If Rusty goes around Jimmy Spencer, and that puts him two laps down. The next car that's uh, one lap down and about to go two is Jeff Bodine, and he is right in front of Rusty Wallace. Field summary as we have completed almost 300 laps coming up on the 300 lap mark. 293 in the books. 
Well, Jeff Gordon is just waiting. He's there, hoping Rusty will slip. Jeff Gordon's driving a smooth, smart race. He has a good race car. And he's backing off when, when things get a little jumpy in front of him. Backs off. Up ahead of Rusty, Jeff Bodine is having his problems with Robert Preston. Here's the lead. Jeff Gordon on the inside. Rusty just moves over. Says, okay, go ahead. You go up there and fight those guys for a while. Presley is going three laps down. Robert back in 21st position. Dale Garrett passes Bobby Labonte for sixth place. Now let's see what Jeff Gordon can do with Jeff Bodine. So far, nothing. <laughs> well, Jeff's keeping him at bay at the moment. And so it is Jeff Gordon who has gone back into the lead. The Bruce City 500, Rusty Wallace back to second. Back with more after these messages. Bob Jenkins, Benny Parsons, Ned Jarrett, Jerry Punch, Bill Weber, and John Kernan back at Bristol International Raceway in Tennessee for the Food City 500 that's being led at the moment by the DuPont Chevy, number 24 of Jeff Gordon. Running second is the number two Miller Ford, driven by Rusty Wallace. Now we have a pretty good battle shooting up for third place between Dale Earnhardt in number three up ahead and Mark Martin with the roof cam. Well, Earnhardt's got caught up in all of that traffic that we saw the leaders go through about 10, 12 laps ago. And uh, it has slowed him some. Very trying to move on the inside of Robert Presley. Bryce Presley's found him a groove on the outside there that's been running pretty good for him, but Earnhardt does get by him. Now Mark Martin cuts down in front of Mark. Mark comes up there now. Whoa. Big touch. <laughs> coming off yeah. the straight away. We've had caution flags, what, a couple of caution flags, and still our average speed is a record. Yep, uh, the record is held by Charlie Glotz back at 101.074. We're above that. We're looking for the five car, the fifth place, Terry Labonte. Oh, there he is. Oh, I'm on the leader. Just ahead of the leader. That's not good. Michael Walker just went two laps down. Michael is running 10th in the uh, Wood Brothers set go forward. Yeah, we'll see him. It's like a fellow, somebody put, when he was parked, somebody put a little note on there. for a parking him. ticket, yeah. yeah. Or a speeding ticket, one of the two. Hey, here's the petty cam back. Yeah. This is a battle for position, by the way, between Waltrip in 21 and Kyle Petty. On whose car we are running. This is the battle for 10th. Michael is 10th and Kyle is 11th. Both of them now, unfortunately, two laps down. You can see 188 laps to go, so can they make it on one more stop, Ned? I don't know. I don't think so, Benny. They stopped, uh, that leader stopped at about 100, and, well, Ricky Rudd didn't stop to like 219, but the, but the, other leaders stopped at like 206, 208 when Jeff Gordon stopped. Rusty Wallace stopped at 201. So Rusty's been out there 113 laps. Right Ooh, now. We're not seeing some very good news here on uh, Martin's roof cam. It's a little moisture, huh? A little bit of rain. Oh, they're having enough trouble slipping and sliding around out there <laughs> as it is. <laughs> they don't need any rain. There we can see just a few drops. Let's clear the lens and just see how quickly it accumulates here. It's not bad. Uh, Bobby Bonnie you know. moves over. Let's Mark Martin go by. Skies really don't look all that bad. The clouds seem to be broken, so I don't think it's a situation where it's going to start raining and rain for a Bob great. You wasn't born in the mountains, were you? It's going to be raining in five minutes. <laughs> It's raining right now, but so hard. that's no part of prediction. <laughs> Come across that hill there, there's a shower. Oh, okay. <laughs> Jerry, what do you say about it? Help me. Well, the bad news is I want to echo the fact that it is starting to rain a little bit now. We're getting some, getting some raindrops on some of the windows. 
Just talk to Ray Evernale a moment ago. They expect to pit around lap 350 to 360, and that should be their final schedule. Pit stop, of course, with the rain starting to come down. You see Ray now motioning to some of the officials in his car is jumping around on the racetrack, and that Jeff Gordon is complaining the car is getting loose out there. So now Ray is beginning to complain a little bit to the NASCAR official. And yellow, no, they're, they're calling for one. Yellow flare is, is coming out right yeah. now. Caution out because of rain. But I don't believe the leader took the caution, so now he has to try to race back and keep Bill Elliott. Ooh. Oh, Elliott spins. He was jumped by Jeff Burton. Yes, he was, indeed. As they came around, he might not have got into the wall too hard. Here comes Elliott with some uh, damage on the nose. Yep, the nose of the car did get into the wall. And this is for rain that goes over in turn three. I can see the rain. Buck, can you see the rain coming? Yeah, out? I can see it now. Yeah. Well, we are going to be cool. too happy. He's pulling up there to the 99 car. Yeah, He's watch. not too happy. He's going to have a few words and just a little, little friendly. Finger at him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just want to tell uh, Mr. Burton that he was not a happy camper. Right. Here's the replay from Michael Waltrip's roof cam. There you see. Yep. They, they contact that Burton down on the inside. Michael almost got into Burton, but Burton backed off. And so the pace car comes out, slowing the pace because it is raining. Raining pretty good right now. Track's getting wet. We'll come right back. In summary, as you see, Terry Labonte on yep. pit road and the other crew members coming out to keep their pit areas dry. And the red flag is out. I'm wondering about this, if he's going to be able to complete that pit stop or what the situation will be. Maybe he came in before the red flag came out. I don't know. You can't work on the car during the red. The red is showing with five cars on the lead lap and 324 of the 500 laps completed. Labonte pulls out of his uh, pit area and will now go over to the line of cars that are stopped over on the back stretch. I tell you what, that is great strategy. Well, yeah, if he got in and uh, apparently there was no penalty involved, so it was great strategy. He'll be the leader of the race. So everybody else is going to stop if we get this race restarted. He had nothing to lose. He was the last car on the lead lap. And, and so, I, it looks to me like from where the rain came from, it's clear back there, and I, I believe we will restart this race, and Terry Labonte could, in fact, be the leader. Good strategy by Gary Dehart. Jerry? Gary, that was a very, very slick move on your part coming in and making a quick pit stop before the red came out. Well, actually, we decided to make a pit stop and do two tires. Excuse me. Do two tires and then try to make up some. I was afraid we might pace car would catch us, so we was going to do two tires and come back in and do two more. But when we come on pit road, they red flagged it. So while we were in, we might as well do four tires. I saw the NASCAR official talking to you. We were wondering whether the red flag was going to come out. They were going to let you complete the pit stop, but you guys were sort of sort of negotiating down here. Well, uh, you know, we, like I said, we didn't know it was a red flag till it was on pit road, and we'd already committed, so I don't think you're going to do anything about it. All right, they have two fresh tires. Gary Dehart making the call. They would like to be able to come back in and get two more, but they got two more fresh tires than anyone else out there, so pretty good move on the Kellogg's team's part. Right, Bob and the tarps coming out on the back stretch as the shower is passing over the racetrack not a hard shower by any means will undoubtedly be able to get this race going again around the light is off top the face car so far we've had seven leaders and seven lead changes Gordon Wallace Martin Elliott Skinner Rudd and Labonte have all gained five points by leading a lap and so far Jeff Gordon has led the most and he is at the front of the field right now as the green comes out back to racing five cars in the lead lap Robert Presley trying to get one of his three laps that he's down Ricky Craven, Dale Jarrett, all those cars. And here comes Terry Labonte. That's a battle for second spot. Whoa, Labonte just slid to the inside of Rusty, and now he comes Mark Martin to take over that third spot. So Rusty is hung out at the moment. And Earnhardt's going to go as well. He's going to drop all the way back to fifth place. That's as far back as he can drop. In, in positions, he finds some other cars pass, but Bobby Labonte's going to let him in. And he's got a spin. Darrell Walter, some heavy damage to the back of the Western Auto Chevrolet. 
break for Dale Jarrett if he can beat Jeff Gordon back to the line. Then Richard Craven can get one of his. That's ahead of guys. That car's sitting on the outside of the track. Wow, Darrell Walter has hit that wall he hard. Yeah, sure that the back end of that car is. And Darrell, don't go in place because that looks like gasoline that is. Uh, I can't even believe the car would even move, but he's yeah. trying. He, he doesn't know how much damage is done to the back of that car. It looks like gasoline that's on the back of the racetrack, and uh, I wouldn't want Daryl to be trying to drag something across there and spark. So somebody tell him. I mean, what am I saying? <laughs> I'm sure that the crew is telling him to turn it off. Oh, what a tough break. Boy, that is a tough break for Daryl. And so much optimism going in. So Dale Jarrett now comes, comes to clear around the racetrack and is back on the lead lap in sixth place. Well, three cars made up a lap on it. Robert Presley, Ricky Craven, and Dale Jarrett. And we have a red flag condition right now. Yeah, there is a considerable amount of gasoline down there on the racetrack. And, and let's, uh, let's just get that cleaned up as quickly as possible, Jerry. Well, Benny, immediately you were talking about cutting it off. It's exactly what the NASCAR official and Pete Peterson here in the in the pits uh, had told Daryl. Pete, you guys immediately were tearing, Dar telling Daryl to cut it off because of the fuel coming out of the back. Uh, it must have busted the uh, neck or something and let the fuel spill out. I, I don't think he knew that. He was trying to get going, that's all. Did he say what happened up there, Pete? He hasn't said anything yet. Okay, that's Pete Peterson and the crew. They're going to try to make their way over to DW, but uh, fortunately, NASCAR right there immediately saw the fuel coming out as Benny Parsons did and Ned upstairs and Bob and ran over here and said, tell him to cut it off, cut it off, which DW immediately did. Well, we've been concerned with moisture on the racetrack all day, and now they are putting moisture down on it, trying to dilute the fuel that came out of that car. That could have been a very bad situation. Darrell's not happy with somebody. But whatever caused this situation, certainly he's, he's unhappy because he tore his race car up, had a great run going here today, but I believe that he's a little concerned about somebody that maybe got into him. He was in 11th position when this thing occurred. Yeah, there you can see he yep. makes contact with somebody. Dark somebody. car. Jeff Bodine, I guess. Yep. Yep. Jeff Bodine, the seventh car. And Darrell spins up, and there we see the gasoline start coming out of the car. There's the front of Jeff's car, and uh, it does show signs of uh, having had contact with Daryl. Once again, we'll show the, he's already hit the wall. He's hit, he hit the wall up there where it says Food City, and now the gasoline is coming out of the car. And it's amazing that the thing is, all that metal was dragging across the track, did not put up a spark, but luckily it didn't. Yep, you're right. And all the cars going by on the inside. Gasoline just comes mm. gushing out of the car. Well, you could see it. It was the, the reddish color, so it was gasoline. And Jerry is with Daryl Waltrip. DW, first of all, a hard lick. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm, actually, I'm pretty good shape. I guess getting out over and walking around a little bit before that uh, got freshened up a little bit. But uh, I knew these restarts were going to be real treacherous and uh, pit road deal, you know, where you come in and everybody gets doubled up. It's going to be exciting here for a while. I hate I got involved in it. I was having a pretty decent run. I think I could have had a pretty good finish. But uh, we'll get them next week. At least we showed some promise today. That's more we've been showing. Showed a lot of promise, D.W. Now, we, we, the crew was trying to tell you to cut it off. You were trying to get it refired and going. Probably had no idea there was fuel pouring, pouring out of the back of the car. No, I've seen drivers, you know, I've seen them at Indy try to fire their cars up, and the motor ain't even on there, so I didn't have any idea. That, I didn't have any idea the fuel cell was busted. I knew it hit pretty hard, but... Uh, I just want to try to get back in the garage and, and get out, you know, get Stevie and get with the kids and we'll get them into, what's the next race? Wil Wilkesburg. My favorite racetrack. <laughs> okay, DW will get them at Wilkesbury and give Stevie a big hug. Let's go up to Bill Weber who's standing by with Childress. Okay, and Richard, let's go back to that last uh, yellow flag after the red flag when the cars came down pit road. Some confusion here and uh, some, some disappointment by some of these teams. Well, you know what, you know, what we thought that they had run a couple of laps and get everything back up to speed and get everybody single back out. We were still sitting on the back stretch whenever they, uh, the 24 and the 6 came in. But I guess, uh, according to NASCAR, they had opened the, the five car had opened the pit road earlier. So, you know, I'm a little confused, but I'll, I'll go with her call. And you had a little trouble getting out too because some of the traffic down here? Yeah, you know, the other cars had pitted uh, that were a lap down, so I don't know. You know, normally they start them in the rear, so I don't know unless they figured that was the second time by. 
Okay, that's Richard Childress. And what happened when the three car tried to leave, the 28 car, which is pitted right in front of them, was there, and Dale had to go forward, back up, and then pull around the 28 to get out. And that cost him, obviously, a few seconds, too. They weren't real happy down here. Everybody's calmed down a little bit, but that last uh, situation down here was not very pleasant. You saw Dale Earnhardt take his goggles and pull it away from his head. If you don't do that, they steam up. Mm -hmm. So you have to take that just like a, a defroster on the car. And again, we'll tell you what's going on. They're diluting this fuel that ran out of Darrell Waltrip's car with water, and they have to do that before they lift the car off the track in case there is a spark or something that might cause the gasoline to ignite. So they pretty well got it diluted now. In just a moment, they'll be dragging the car off the racetrack. Then we'll dry up the wet spot and get back to racing. Jeff Gordon still leads here at Bruce Carr, being uh, taken back into the infield area. A lot of damage, fuel completely out of the car, and uh, the cleanup here on the main straightaway still is continuing. Still losing a little fuel mm -hmm. as they're taking the car back. So, yeah. But that piece on the front that's dragging the ground is fiberglass, and that will not throw up a spark. So. Good. All right, let's take a look at our Bush race recap. Jeff Gordon, we've completed 335 laps, and he's led 141 of them. Seven lead changes, five caution periods for 31 laps, and the average speed 76. There are the drivers who have led a lap and picked up the five bonus points. Bobby Labonte has led two laps. And now let's show you the drivers that are out of the race. Only three officially. Elton Sawyer, Mike Skinner, and most recently, Daryl Waltrip. Jerry is with uh, Gary Dehart. Now, we saw Terry Labonte pit just before the red flag came out, Gary. So then the red flag comes out. You guys have already pitted for four tires. You're at the back of the field. You would expect when the uh, caution comes back out that you would be the leader because everyone else would pit. But it didn't happen that way. Uh, yeah, I, I know. What happened was when they turned the cars loose where they had them stop back there on pit road. Uh, or on the track, the, the leaders kind of went ahead and started running pretty hard, and, and uh, or, the pace car was missing too. If you notice that, but anyway, uh, w when we finally got around here, the lead cars already pit and beat us off the pit road. NASCAR said that's where we we're supposed to be, so I guess that's where we we're supposed to be, Jerry. So in other words, uh, if everyone had gotten going in the same at the same time, probably the five car would already have passed everyone that had pitted. But as it was, with cars still getting cranked up back there, you guys had to fall in line behind guys that had just freshly pitted. Yeah, it's a little bit confusing because the leaders, uh, they chose not to pit earlier, and we did pit. We didn't get caught with that red flag thing. So we should have been out, come back out. When, when the pitting was through, we should have been the leader. But uh, it also opened the door for all the lap down traffic to pit the first lap too so really everybody was out on the racetrack running around no one knew where they need to be and uh, I, I, I guess we just ended up where we need to be or where we ended up but uh that's third spot that's not bad well you're second now anyway yeah well that's pretty good from what we were looking like earlier you know it was almost a lap down and then we got that rain shower and, and it caught, caught us up you know we were a little bit tight that time uh, uh the car should be a little bit better now all right, a little smile out of Gary Dehart. So they got a break prior to the red coming out. Then the NASCAR being fair at letting everyone pit uh, ended up putting them back in third spot when we got ready to restart. Let's go to Bill Weber. Hey, Top Perry, you got your lap back. How about that? Yeah, how about that, huh? How about that, Dale Jarrett? Driving some of a gun, isn't he? He's having a good day out there. Now, now what'd you do to the car? Um, freed it up a little bit, but now that we got our lap back and we're on the tail end of the lead lap, we're going to come in and put on four, four more tires. and so you got nothing to lose now. Oh, no, got nothing to lose now. Just going to, in case he ran through debris or whatever, we're just going to come in and get four more tires and hopefully drive it to the front. No more rain. No more rain. Now we got our lap back. We can win this thing. Okay, Dale Jarrett coming to the front. You heard it here live on ESPN. <laughs> <laughs> Cleanup is still going on. Uh, and look at this. He's beating the hasty retreat, isn't he? <laughs> he is out of here. Uh-oh, now how am I going to get over this thing, he said, huh? Uh-oh. Where's the steps? Where's the steps? Oh, they're going to gonna, they're gonna open the gate for Daryl. Well, ain't that nice. That's very nice. Oh, that's right. Stevie is not going to be able to climb over the fence. Yeah, so Daryl could do it. 
You know, we talked earlier about how Daryl is the top performer here at Bristol in the modern era with 42 races and an average finish of 7.4. You know who the guy is who's second on that list as Daryl gets a big round of applause? Who is the second top performer here at Bristol in the modern era? BP? Not necessarily an active driver. BP? How about that? Really? Yeah. Did you really? Know that? No. 7.5 was, was your average finish in 24 races here at Bristol. Really? That's good. Yep. Wow. How about that? I'm impressed. So am I. And for that, Benny, you win absolutely nothing. That's what I figured about what I won for that 7.5. <laughs> Still a lot of clouds over there beyond the mountain, but it doesn't look like it's going to rain anymore. We should be back to racing in a moment. Fire at the trouble spot down here on the main straightaway, drying the area, and uh, it shouldn't take that thing too long to... Uh, Get this moisture up out of the racetrack and we'll be back to competition once again. Well, we had a little bit of a controversy down on pit road a while ago regarding Sterling Marlin. Doc, what's the latest? Well, Bob, I'll tell you, that jet dryer isn't nearly as hot as these guys were about <laughs> 10 minutes ago here in the Kodak pits. I'm with Larry McClure. And Larry, NASCAR now had looked at the tape, we are told, and is trying to correct that situation. Well, I hope so. Uh, we didn't think we'd done anything wrong. and uh, We didn't pit the first time by because they told us not to, that we couldn't. So uh, a couple of mistakes made, and, it, and it, uh, it cost us quite a bit because we felt like we could get our lap back. We were about the fastest car on the racetrack, so I'm sure they'll do the right thing. I hope they do. Talking about how much of a family this is, there were other crew chiefs that actually came up and told the NASCAR official here in your pits. I know Steve Mill and others came up and said, hey, the four car wasn't over the line. Uh, he, had a right, he had the right side tires on the line because of some fuel back there. I think all of us, there was fuel back there, but I think all of us, work together and race together each week and we don't want to take anything from people. Steve was looking out for us. He, he wanted the right thing to be done. Same thing would happen to Steve. We'd do the same thing. So uh, I think they'll do the right thing. That's Larry McClure, the car owner. What about it, guys? A Ford team and a Ford crew chief helping a Chevrolet team, trying to do what he thought was right by helping the NASCAR official. This is what happened just a few minutes ago when uh, Larry and Tony were a little unhappy with the call that was made from the NASCAR officials. <laughs> NASCAR officials said, look, that call was made upstairs. I didn't make that call. Tony, he's now, who, 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 can I, who can I argue with? Okay, I'll go over and talk to this guy. <laughs> no. <laughs> Some good emotion there, Tony. He's a competitor. He, he is, is definitely yes, a competitor. Sir. Can't See? blame him. Yep. <laughs> Crew was all laughing, watching Tony and laughing. <laughs> Turn around, wave to us, guys. <laughs> They're probably not hearing audio. I guess They're they just don't hear audio. See, there oh, we there go. We go. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> all right. The conversation is continuing. This thing uh, hasn't been uh, completely resolved, but uh, our Kodak moment continues. Yes. <laughs> All right, we'll uh, keep our ear to the ground here and determine what happens and report to you what the final decision is in just a moment. We're going to take another break as the red flag continues to be waving. Some fresh tires on the left side. He was allowed to make up the lap, so he's only two laps down. Dale Jarrett has been in twice. I think he's got all four new now, doesn't he, Ned? Yeah, he changed two the other time, so he was at the tail, tail end of the whole field and could only change two tires at a time, so he now has four fresh ones. And before for that, Rusty Wallace and Dale Earnhardt came on to pit road to each get topped off. Doesn't take long to get the uh, to get the uh, cars topped off. See the Jack Rusty's car up just a little bit on the left side to get in every bit of fuel they can. Robin Pemberton said that they might be about six laps short. And so now they that came back the in. That could be the difference. And there is the first time that Dale Jarrett came in to get right side tires. And uh, they don't want to change all four at once because you can lose a lap that way. So he made two pit stops, four, four fresh tires. There's Jeff Bodine going out of the backstretch pits just ahead of the pace car. And now we're set to go back to racing. Jeff Bodine is in 19th position, two laps down. Ward Burton, Ricky Craven also making pit stops here on the main straightaway as the pace car continues to circle the racetrack with the caution light on. And Sterling Marlin, uh, we, we talked about NASCAR maybe giving Sterling Marlin one of the lap back that uh, they penalized him. They did, in fact, give him a lap back. So. And the way they did that, they let him go out and pass the pace car and went around the racetrack so that it would show up proper on the score. They don't just mark an extra lap on the uh, scoring. They, they let him go around. 
We understand that it is raining again. Yes, and it's uh, it's coming dark. down pretty hard, isn't it? Yes, you can sir. see the track getting wet already. Yes, it's darker over here. Oh, yeah. Some areas too. And you can always tell when it's starting to rain because the umbrellas and the raincoats come out, and the fans are doing so down below us. And there is the roof camp showing the moisture, and Bill Elliott is back out, albeit without a nose. Where is he, Ned? Uh, 28 right now. Yeah. About 18 laps down. Well, this has been a very frustrating day, hasn't it? We've had rain, rain, more rain, and a 19-minute red flag because of the spilled fuel from Daryl Walter's car. And there is the rain. The rain, yeah. It's showing up pretty good in the reflection from the lights. The crews once again move out to cover up their respective pit areas to keep them dry. But uh, we're not going to get green flag here very soon. No, we won't. We will look at a Napa field summary to show you where the if all the drivers are running right now. These laps are being counted, by the way. We're up to 341 right now. There are six cars that are on the lead lap, just three one lap down, and a whole bunch that are two laps down. And there's a whole bunch of mouses. <laughs> 16 through 30, Ernie Irvin. A couple of laps down. Elton Sawyer credited to with 37th today, the first car out. So David Blair back in Batesville, Arkansas. Sorry about that. And I hope you're doing some good on your sponsor search. Yes. It'd be great to see them get some riding on the side of that car. See Doyle Ford talking to the NASCAR officials. And evidently he understands what they're saying. By the way, you know, Darlington last week, Doyle dropped the green flag on one of the restarts, and they're red flag in the race again right now. Mm. He dropped the green flag on one of the restarts, so this week he took a rubber band and tied around that so he could put around his hand and so that wouldn't happen again. It's all right. Yeah. And I shouldn't bring it up. I won't bring it up anymore. So all this is the last time I'll mention it. <laughs> now that the world knows it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, there is the red once again. Uh, it's, uh... And he's gracefully, beautifully waving that red flag. Atta boy, Doyle. What a job you're doing. You Got to do something to get back in the good graces of Doyle. <laughs> not a good sight. Bill, what do you got? I just wanted to tell you, according to the radar, it's not raining here. So, <laughs> so we can go ahead and go because right here on the NASCAR radar, if you look where Bristol International Raceway is, mm -hmm. it's clear. No, so it's I mean, not raining. See all this stuff, though? Yeah. That's rain. Yeah. You know where it's coming? Right here. So here's the raceway. And right here, if you look real closely, you can see the Tri-Cities Airport. That's where my plane leaves about an hour and a half without me tonight. That's to right. A, um, a lot of us. But, uh, Forget it. Yeah, so it is raining here now, and this stuff is coming. And uh, we're going to really have to play some dodgeball here to try and get the rest of these laps in. But cross our fingers. Hopefully we will. Let's see. In about uh, three hours, looks like it's going to be nice. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby going to hang around for that? That'd be sure, good. I'll we be get, here to that, the bitter that, end. That's why they have lights here. That's right. And we all know how much everybody loves the night race here at Bristol, right? The lights are on, by yes, the way. Yes, so we can get a preview of one of the best races of the year on the NASCAR circuit, the that's fall right. night race at Bristol here maybe today, and it'll be dry. So uh, we'll keep our fingers crossed, but we'll be hanging around and see what happens. Okay, well, we'll be here. And I'm not going any place. I want to see the last of these few laps. About 150 laps. Every one of these cars that are on the lead lap uh, have demonstrated their ability to lead and uh, possibly win this race. So it's going to be good when the thing resumes. The jet dryer is back out. We have seen it demonstrate earlier today that it doesn't take long to dry the track when it does stop raining and that dryer gets out there. So if it would just stop raining and give us about 45 minutes or an hour, we could get this thing in the books. In the meantime, we'll take another commercial. ESPN Speed World coverage of the Food City 500 from Bristol International Raceway is being brought to you by McDonald's. On the track and in our restaurants, just watch us cook. By Briggs & Stratton, your number one source of power. Make sure all your outdoor power equipment has a Briggs & Stratton engine. And by Napa Auto Parts, we keep America running. The announcement has just been made.
The uh, race has been called at this point at the conclusion of 343 laps, and Jeff Gordon is the winner. And look at his incredible climb in the points. 42nd in points after Daytona, 43rd after Rockingham. Then the climb began with a victory at Richmond. He finished third in Atlanta, moved to 16th in the points. At Darlington last week, his win moved him to 9th, and with the win today here at Bristol, Jeff Gordon is now 6th in the points. Let's go down to our McDonald's Winner Circle interview and Jerry Punch. This might be the most unusual victory lane we've done, sitting up here in a nice leather recliner, Jeff, but uh, you drove it hard all day. Congratulations. Well, right now it's the only dry place, but uh, I, I guess you're giving me the official word because I've still been waiting for that official word, but... Uh, it is official, right? Let me ask you that. It is official. Okay, the math. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. You're the winner. Well, thank you, Jerry. Uh, you know, I, this isn't the way, of course, we want to win this thing, but we did have a strong car. Uh, you know, uh, uh, you kind of want to see that checkered flag, but uh, we, we did we did our part for, for what part of the race we did run, and I got to thank those guys on the on the DuPont Chevrolet. They they were great. They did a good job. Uh, you know, they, they got me in out of the pits when we needed to, uh, but we weren't the fastest car yesterday in that last practice. And we had a great car today, so I, I'm real proud of them. Uh, Goodyear tires were, were great today, and I uh, forgot to thank Coca-Cola last weekend. So this is pretty amazing. Uh, you know, I, it's just not the same, I know, but uh, it, it's pretty amazing to the way things have been going for us. And, and uh, it, you know, I can't believe we, we're, we just won at Bristol this way. This is amazing. You know, you're sitting here waiting for the word, Jeff, and about uh, two minutes ago, Earnhardt walks in and just sticks out his hand and says, congratulations, you're the winner, I'm out of here. And uh, he congratulated you before you even knew you had won it. Yeah, I think he's got a little more pull than all of us, and he, he had the direct line to, to who makes the calls, but uh, I think he's on his way to Japan. But I, I know when, when he told me that, I figured it was pretty official. That's as official as we need around here. Three wins in the last four outings, and the guy goes from ninth to sixth in the point standings as the climb continues for the reigning Winston Cup champion, Jeff Gordon, who wins today here at Bristol. And Jeff sitting in the uh, NASCAR trailer in a dry place, and uh, by golly, we are still getting rain outside here in Bristol. Let's take a look at the unofficial results, and guys, it's pretty amazing that uh, Jeff Gordon got off to such a poor start for the first two races, and wow, is he on a comeback, huh? Well, he really is, Bob, no doubt about that. Three wins in four races and a top five in the other one. And as Bristol races go, today was fairly uneventful, although Darrell Waltrip and Kenny Walsh and a couple other cars involved in accidents wouldn't say so, but as Bristol goes, fairly uneventful. This is the uh, unofficial results. Again, this race has been called at this point 343 out of the 500 laps completed. Rain, rain, rain from beginning to the end, and it resulted in our first rain-shortened event since Martinsville almost a year ago last April. The points, the first four stay the same with Dale Earnhardt, 37 points now behind Dale Jarrett, Rudd, Craven, and Labonte, and now the six through 10. Several positions change here. Jeff Gordon moves up to sixth, and it's Mark Martin, Bill Elliott, Rusty Wallace, and Ted Musgrave. We'll take next weekend off for Easter, but be back at North Wilkesboro for a big weekend starting on Friday at 3 o'clock with Winston Cup qualifying. The lows 150, 5 o'clock Eastern time on Saturday. NASCAR today at 12.30 on Sunday and the First Union 400 at 1 o'clock two weeks from today. Sports Center is coming up next. Thanks to Jerry Putch, John Kernan, Bill Weber, Ned Sheridan, Benny Parsons. I'm Bob Jenkins. Thanks for joining us. So long, everyone.